Hey, welcome back Screen Crush, I'm Ryan Airy, and we are about to bring you an exclusive breakdown of the Marvel footage that was just shown at CinemaCon. Guys, our very own Colton Ogburn, the guy who's eternally trapped in our television but doesn't know so please don't tell him, was at the Disney presentation where he just watched nine minutes of Deadpool and Wolverine, footage from Captain America Brave New World, and he heard Kevin Feige say the F word. So Colton is going to come on and tell us everything that he saw and break down that footage. Nope, I'm actually okay, thank you very much. And before we get rolling, guys, thank you for watching. Thank you for clicking this video and supporting our channel. As you know, we design our own merch at ScreenCrushMerch.com, where we have awesome new shirts like this Gambit Remember It tribute shirt, the X-Men Nighthawk shirt, our Deadpool MCU savior, and many more. You can find the link to that collection down below. Thank you for supporting us. Now, Deadpool and Wolverine is Marvel Studios' only film this year, and it is projected to make major cash at the box office, and it'll be a return to form for the studio after some lackluster projects in the multiverse saga. Not only is this the third installment of the very successful Deadpool franchise, but it's also the triumphant return of Hugh Jackman's Wolverine. Jackman hung up the claws back in 2017 after the masterpiece that was Logan, and he said that he was done playing the character. But that all changed when Ryan Reynolds convinced him to play the character one more time. Hey, Hugh, you want to play Wolverine one more time? Yeah, sure, Ryan. This is also the first time we're seeing Jackman don the iconic yellow suit from the comics and X-Men the Animated Series. And on this official piece of promo art spotted on a cup at the CinemaCon showroom floor, we can see Jackman's Wolverine in his mask. Getting to see these two characters on screen together and as part of the MCU's multiverse saga is so exciting. I am so freaking pumped for this movie. So let's bring on Colton to tell us exactly what they showed him at the CinemaCon presentation. Oh, that's right. To get Colton to CinemaCon, we had to ship the tiny TV to Las Vegas, which is a long way from our video store at the end of time and space. So we're going to use NordVPN to help us access Colton's feed. They're our sponsor for this video. All right. So, well, by using NordVPN, I've tricked the computer here into thinking that we're in Las Vegas and I'm picking up Colton's TV signal now. Colton, you were in the room. You were in the room where it happened with Kevin Feige. And I just, I want to hear everything. So first of all, what was it like being in the same like arena is Kevin Feige and what was his presentation like? Oh my God. Okay. So I, all week, you know, I've seen, I've seen Henry Cavill. If, if you're a fan of the channel, you know, I adore Henry Cavill. I've seen Anya Taylor joy, Chris Hemsworth, you know, Thor himself. I when Kevin Feige walked out on that stage. I, I felt this feeling of starstruck that I had not felt all week. I, I've never had the pleasure of like seeing him in person, like at a comic con or anything. So when they said, no, president of Marvel Studios, Kevin Feige, I was shocked. I really did not think he would be here. There's so many other like, you know, events and stuff happening this year. I, I didn't think Feige would, you know, bother with coming to Cine CinemaCon, but I, I was so glad that he did. And, you know, it, it makes sense because Marvel uh, Studios has been a in a position where, you know, movies haven't been performing as well as they used to. So I was glad to see that Kevin Feige himself, as a representative of Marvel Studios, the head guy himself, came here and told movie theaters, hey, don't, don't, you know, don't worry. Marvel Studios is here. We are still making blockbusters and they're presenting, you know, Deadpool and Wolverine and uh, Captain America. And they, they were reminding theater owners of how good a Marvel movie can be. And dude, with the stuff they showed us, oh my God, I, I got chills. Even as somebody who hasn't been questioning as much uh, the integrity or the, uh, you know, Marvel Studios and their ability to still create good content, even I was like, damn, I got this feeling of Marvel is back. Well, I want to get into that then. So um, the big surprise was for me that they were showing Brave New World because Brave New World was originally supposed to come out this year, Captain America Brave New World. Then they delayed it to next year. Apparently test audiences didn't like certain things. There's rumors the Serpent Society was cut. What a loss. Um, <laughs> so I, 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 did, I was surprised they showed anything, even though a lot of the movie was shot pre-pandemic and they they right. i'm so excited about this movie like i for me what i think the mcu has been missing is this grounded you know what's going on who's the president uh what's going on with the avengers what did we see as far as uh, the can we talk about the captain america brave new world footage just describe it for us and what was it like yes yes oh, okay so I, I enjoy, you know, Anthony Mackie as uh, Captain America. I liked Falcon and the Winter Soldier. That being said, I personally have uh, been on the record as of saying I'm not so sure a, a Captain America movie, uh, a Captain America 4 without Steve Rogers. I, I don't know if that's something that would work. 
my mind has been changed. They showed, uh, I, I believe it was like five minutes or so of footage from uh, from this Captain America 4 movie, and it was awesome. We got to see uh, Harrison Ford as Thunderbolt Ross. He is the president of the United States uh, when this the movie begins, I believe. That was kind of the impression. This is we, In the scene we saw, it was the first time these two characters are meeting uh, since uh, like Civil War, I think. Um, and Ryan, I actually had a question for you. Uh, I'm going to show my ignorance here a little bit. The, one of the lines that Thunderbolt Ross says, or President Ross says um, to Falcon or Captain America is that after what he did in Mexico, he has been, re it really opened his eyes. So I'm not sure if a reference to what he did in Mexico, I, I don't know if that's something in this movie. <laughs> Is that where the opening of Falcon and the Winter Soldier took place? Remember the that, really that, cool aerial battle yeah. where everybody gets Batroc the Leaper? Okay, yeah. That they spent I, the whole I, budget on? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, it was a pretty amazing sequence. It's, you know, yeah. If you're going to lead off, lead off huge. So back to Brave New World, though. I heard there was a cute little end joke or something when they meet in the Oval Office. Yes. He, he's Okay, so uh, Anthony Mackie says, um, still getting used to the new look. Uh to President Ross in reference to oh, him not cute. having a mustache. But you uh -huh, know, of course, it's uh -huh. that he's the now playing the character. And you know, right. I, I've got to say, having Harrison Ford in this movie, it just, you know, it's tragic what happened, you know, with the original actor, of course. But oh, William Hurt's a legend. Yes, yeah. he's a legend, and he he played Thunderbolt Ross so well for so many years. But the, to look on the positive side, Harrison Ford really does bring like this gravitas to the movie right. and it just it felt like a political thriller it felt like i was kind of watching the west wing or something but like in a much more darker sense um it really felt winter soldier it had all those vibes um it, it, it felt cinematic you know it didn't feel like a tv show or you know anything like that it it felt like a captain america movie it felt like a, a serious like high stakes marvel studios movie and that, that's great to hear because I was hoping when they cast Harrison Ford that it would be a callback to movies like Patriot Games or Clear and Present Danger, you know, where he played Jack yes. Ryan. So describe what we saw. Like, were there actual clips? Was it just trailer stuff? What happened in the footage? For God's sake, man, tell me what happened in the footage. Okay, so what he is wanting, well, the reason he has summoned uh, Sam to the White House is he, uh, President Ross, is wanting to form his own Avengers. He says how in the past he knows that they have butted heads before, you know, in reference to Civil War, of course, but that now he is wanting, as the new president of the United States, by the way, he said he had to shave the mustache in order to win the election. I thought that was a <laughs> nice little touch, you know, because this... Nice. The movie really does feel like it's going to get into like the politics of it all and like the, you know. I love this, it. Bring it. Yeah, I it, like Star Wars so politics. True. I like Marvel politics. Yes. I'm disgusted by actual politics. I need escapism <laughs> politics. But it, yes, yeah, so he he is recruiting Sam. Um, then they, it, it felt kind of like they jumped to a different scene, like maybe there was something cut in between. Mm -hmm. But they're then in a scenario where President Ross is like giving a briefing to like a room full of people. And you see Isaiah from Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Mm -hmm. um, he's in the audience and you hear this like high pitch, no, like this interference type thing in like his ear. And he immediately goes like super soldier, like like robotic, like, like he's under control. Oh, and he like starts attacking people. Stuff. Yeah, great. like going for the president. Um, and then we see Sam like interfere, like trying to stop him. Uh, and then we see, you know, President Ross ushered out of the room. So it, it's something like just how like Bucky was, you know, under control uh, when they would say, you know, that certain series of words to make him go Winter Soldier. It was like that same thing was kind of happening with with this super soldier. So did you see the suit, the new suit? Because a lot of people didn't like the, that last one. The cap suit, you know, it. I'm trying, I guess it didn't stick out well. It, it was different from the one in Falcon and Winter Soldier. Uh, less mm -hmm. white, you know, up here. There, there was a lot of white on the shoulders. In the head. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, it was cool. You know, it didn't stick out to me. Uh, now that you're mentioning it, I wasn't like, wow, look at that suit. But it it wasn't anything bad. It looked cool. I, it felt like that's Captain America. That's what I got. I was like, that guy is Captain America. So uh, are Ross and Sam just buddy buddy forming the Avengers together? There, I mean, we kind of thought that's what the Thunderbolts were going to be. We're like Ross's Avengers, but now it looks like they might change the name because it's got an asterisk on it. We don't have to get into that. But um, does it seem like well, they're they're best friends now? 
No, there's there's definitely tension between the two characters. Sam is definitely weary of trusting Thunderbolt Ross. Um, I got the sense just from the footage they showed us. I got a sense that Sam definitely does not trust him and is weary of uh, partnering with him. But there's also this like sense of desperation, and they're kind of acknowledging the fact that the Avengers aren't a thing right now. And Sam. Uh, it seems like he is kind of in a desperate situation where he knows that the world still needs the Avengers. So he is willing to partner with Ross, even though he is, you know, weary of it. But uh, no, they do not seem buddy buddy at all. It seems like a relationship that is definitely has some strain on it. And I think it's safe to say that that relationship is not going to last probably through through the first act. I, I see the, that relationship going sour after the first act. Of the, well, I of can't the wait film. to see how the Red Hulk figures into this. That's what we all want to see Harrison Ford in, in uh, slim tights saying, please resist. So now let's talk about the main event, Deadpool and Wolverine. You saw the first nine minutes, right? Excuse me, I would like to rent Shogun. The 1980s miniseries? Sure, it's back there. No, the current miniseries. I hear it's great. It is, but you actually can't rent that. It's streaming on Disney+. Plus. No, it's not. I have Disney+, Plus and I checked. It's not on there. Actually, Shogun and lots more mature movies and shows are streaming on Disney+, Plus, just not in the United States. Why, in other countries, you can watch Alien, Fight Club, It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, and Starship Troopers on the family-friendly Disney+, Plus platform. Oh, but I can't go to another country just to watch a show. Not again, anyways. And I already subscribed to so many streaming services. Well, here's what you do, my friend. Use NordVPN to change your IP address to a different country. Country. Boom, now you can watch Shogun. Shogun. Now, because of NordVPN, I was able to cancel almost every streaming service that I subscribe to. No more doing a trial for a new service or renting the movie. Guys, you're already paying for that movie, but you just didn't know it. Believe me, almost every show and movie you can think of is streaming on Netflix somewhere in the world. I have been using NordVPN for almost four years now, and it's unbelievable how much time and money this app has saved me. For one, it's an incredible ad blocker. It's the only ad blocker I use. They also offer threat protection, which protects you from malicious sites, downloads, trackers, and intrusive ads. Like if you click on a suspicious attachment in your email, then threat protection deletes that download before it even finishes, protecting your desktop from ever getting infected. So we have an exclusive offer for you. If you go to nordvpn.com slash screencrush or click the link in the description, you get a huge discount plus four bonus months. And you can take advantage of their 30-day money-back guarantee. Again, the best way to get this deal is to just click our link below. Now, Colton, back to Deadpool Wolverine. Tell me what you saw. <laughs> Okay, so as you know, I have said I, this is my most anticipated movie uh, of the year. I, I have been so anxious all week hoping that they would show something. I had gotten to the point where, and don't get me wrong, the, the various studios throughout the week have shown cool stuff, but I had kind of gotten to the point like, oh, I hope they at least say something about Deadpool and Wolverine. When they came out and said they were showing nine minutes of the movie, oh my God. And uh, so I'm getting ahead of myself. The way they open the panel, the way they open the Disney panel, it's Deadpool and Wolverine walking down like this tunnel. The yellow this suit? underground tunnel. Yellow suit, yes. Okay. And Deadpool goes to ask Wolverine. He says, so in Secret Wars, do you think that, and then he's interrupted by a, uh, like a text tone. And then he's like, huh. and then he goes to talk again. He's interrupted again. And uh, oh wait! So he was he, about to ask him: Is is like a new character going to be in, or something? Or, or something yes, like about that? Oh, yeah. Okay. He was asking him a yeah, question yeah. about Secret Wars, and then uh, and by the way, this just started, and I was like, oh, but I started taking notes. Like I I was waiting, you know, like for some suit to come out and talk for twenty minutes before they got to it. They just started right with it, and so then Deadpool realizes that it's a text from the audience, and he looks out to the audience, and he kind of starts to scold us a little bit, saying, "Please put your phones on silent," and then Wolverine just goes ape shit. He looks into the camera, turn your and bleep, 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 like threatening. You can see the veins in his neck. Hugh Jackman is threatening the audience saying to turn off your freaking phones. <laughs> it was amazing. And, you know, from leaked footage and stuff that, that we've seen, like behind the scenes stuff of them filming, I had been getting the impression that this was a more angry type Wolverine, like not, not the type of Wolverine that we've seen go through so much character development. And mm -hmm. we've had so many discussions on well, which Wolverine is this? This was confirmation for me. This is a very different Wolverine. This is a Wolverine that's in pain, a sad, you know, angry Wolverine, kind of like how we first find Wolverine in the first X-Men movie. And mm -hmm. this seems like a Wolverine that has 
But, but interesting enough, he is in his yellow Wolverine costume. So what is he angry about? I don't know. But I, I know there. Than... Go ahead. Sorry, yeah. there was there was a cup uh, released oh, with yes, his mask yes. on. Yeah, um, and I've seen. Was he wearing the mask in this footage you're talking about? He was. He was not wearing the mask in the footage. Uh, but yes, there was a cup on the CinemaCon trade show floor. I didn't get to see it. I think they actually put it up after the pictures leaked because I yeah, walked I that mean, floor. Yeah. Just Google but it. But yeah, at him with the mask. It's there, yeah, it's, it's on, the on there. for you right now, right. But yeah. no, he didn't have the mask on uh, in any of this footage, no. Okay, so that was the opening footage. Then we got the nine opening. minutes. Okay, so yes. were they nine consecutive minutes or were they nine minutes total from from what i could tell nine consecutive minutes i, I didn't baby tell me all about it and i'm gonna yeah. interrupt and ask questions as we go go ahead yeah the editor and me didn't get any like inkling of like any trickery or anything it seemed like they just oh, good. took a chunk right out of the movie uh so we open he's uh working at this uh car rental place or car sell place i don't know uh he also works there with peter um, he is no longer, yeah, he is no longer Deadpool. And so that shot that we got in the uh, first trailer where we see Deadpool's costume hanging in the locker, he doesn't even want it there. Peter put it there because he goes on saying, we are Deadpool. And like, he's wanting to go on missions oh, and so stuff. That's, that's not even in the TVA. That's just like no, at, no. The rental, at the car lot. Oh my God. Okay. Yes. That's cool. his locker at work. Uh, he's no longer a superhero, but Peter, you know, X-Force. You know, he's trying to get yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Deadpool to start superheroing again. Peter wants to be a superhero, but Deadpool says he's done. Uh, that That's not what he's doing anymore. Uh, then we see them uh, leave work. Oh, we also got to see uh, Deadpool stapling his wig onto his head. <laughs> <laughs> that was an interesting okay. way. Uh, when yeah. they leave work, they're walking down the street. Um, we Deadpool senses that he is being photographed, and he looks, and there's obviously like this uh, person undercover as a construction worker taking pictures of him. We later find out that is the TVA. Deadpool has been under surveillance for quite some time, so uh, we saw that. Interesting. Uh, they need to send in physical photographers to get that footage. That's yeah, that was my thought. I was like, yeah. why don't you just click on your, your TVA TV? Or maybe that's know. how all that works. Maybe that's how the TVA monitors are working. There's always oh, people but... there filming you, like the uh, like the observers in French. There it right, is. French fans? Right, right. You, person? You, that, Sorry, Colton, go ahead. One viewer? Um, okay, so... I'm telling you, though, there's, there's a nerdy couple uh, watching this on their TV who just high-fived when I mentioned French. For you guys. 100%. Ahead, Colton, sorry. So they go to his apartment. Uh, he's there with what? Oh, I'm so embarrassed. What's her name? Val or who does he live with? The uh, blind woman he lives with. She's hilarious. Um, they share an apartment uh, mm -hmm. and they, Al, they're there for Al. his. Right, right. Uh, so they share an apartment. And anyway, when they go into the apartment, it's a surprise. It's a surprise birthday party for Wade. Um, everybody's there, like you saw in the trailer uh, Yukio, Negasonic. Uh, Colossus is there. Uh, we get to see Wade have like different small talk with different characters. Uh, the one that I wrote down because this was all happening kind of quick. Uh, the one that I got to jot down was he asked Colossus uh, if he was like binging anything, and Colossus said he's a fan of what was it, the, the Great British Bake Off. <laughs> so that's oh, what Colossus cool. yeah. is totally yeah. uh, currently yeah. watching. Uh, so then, yeah. So then uh, we get a, a good scene between. So him and Vanessa Wade are and broken up. Yeah, they're broken up. Yes, that's what I was getting to. They, oh, shit. Okay. All right. Right. Go. They, right. We get a scene of them in the kitchen together, like washing dishes or something, you know, and it's just a small little like intimate scene between the two. Uh, they, uh, He asks if she's seeing anyone. Uh, she recently got a promotion at work. Um, and yeah, you can just tell they're not together anymore. Um, God, so and she says, what was it? He asks, when he asks if she's seeing anyone, uh, she says, yeah, somebody from work. Uh, and she says something offhand like, he hasn't got me shot yet. So it kind of implies Ooh. there that's why they're broken up because she died in Deadpool 2. He, of course, was able to bring her back with time travel, but uh, maybe I'm, she was shot like, after we've, that too, you know? Yeah. Well, maybe, but I think like we've theorized the, the trauma of having died. It is going to be oh, like oh, that's so sad, man. That yeah, okay. Yeah, so I don't want to dive too deep into that depressing stuff. So what happens next? <laughs> I don't. Again, I don't want to spoil like for people either. Like we don't have to give like a total play by play, 
Uh, but right. Give me a give me a play by play. <laughs> like, what happens? Well, and here's the left? thing, guys. I know it feels like I'm giving a play by play, like scene by scene. There's tons of like just funny fourth wall breaking, absolutely foul cursing things I can't say here mm -hmm. that happens all throughout this entire scene that I have skipped over. Just absolutely hilarious stuff. It is still very much a Deadpool movie. This movie was not Disney fied or whatever you want to call it at all. It is very R rated. Um, so after that, they do the uh, the birthday, uh, the the blowing out the candles, and you know the, the same speech from the trailer. Oh, but I'm happy and because of you guys, all that. And dude, even quicker than in the trailer, you know, we did a video, uh, what did Deadpool wish for, and we theorized that his mm -hmm. wish like affected the TVA because in the trailer he goes, and then you hear the knock knock. Even quicker in this scene, the second he blows out that candle, I'm not, I'm not even sure that he finished like his breath. You hear wow. a knock at the door by the TVA. Yeah. And so he goes, answers, you know, pegging something new to me, friendo, all that. <laughs> and that goes on a little longer. He starts saying how uh, he hopes there's kissing and all this stuff. They finally yeah. get tired of it. They arrest him, take him into the TVA. He wakes up. Uh, we hear uh, Mr. Paradox say, Paradox, Mr., like introduces himself, says that Wade soiled himself while he was unconscious. Wade says, I wasn't unconscious. Um, and then we hear, uh, he, he says, we're the Time Variance Authority, the TVA. We oversee this thing called the Sacred Timeline, which I thought was interesting. We can talk about that because the Sacred Timeline, of course, was the thing in Loki Season 1, but after Why? Loki Why Season 2... Yeah, well, it's not Unless supposed they, to be well, the sacred timeline anymore. Okay, so this either... T We're dealing with weird timey-wimey time travel stuff where there is no before because as soon as Loki takes over and creates that, that's how it's always been, but there was still a before in the metatextual way, and since Deadpool's a fourth-wall character, sure, this yeah. could take place during that time, I guess. Because there's it could, also... It like could be... Well, and if there's a void at the end of time, that makes sense. Go ahead, sorry. Right. I was going to say it could be taking place before, you know, lo it, yeah. before, you know, like you said, time is relative kind of in this type sure. of thing before Loki cool. season two. But I also got the impression that this sacred timeline might be in reference specifically to the Marvel Cinematic Universe, like 616. So I got oh, that impression a, okay. a little later. Um, but okay. a line that I, I want to say before we move on to that, Deadpool straight up says, is this about the, the the time traveling thing with cables, you know, wristband that I did? And he mm -hmm. goes, "No, we are we are well aware of your time traveling uh, shenanigans or whatever. No, this has nothing to do with that." <laughs> and just completely dismisses so that. They know who they're talking to. I feel very seen right now mm -hmm. by that. Thank you, yeah. Sean. Lennon. Yeah, uh, yeah, and the, yes. So I thought that was kind of a fourth wall break in its own. And he's like, "No, mm -hmm. it has nothing to do with that." I liked that. Um, so then he reveals that they've been watching Deadpool for quite some time now. Uh, and he does the come with me and they, they go and they, they walk into the TVA. It was so cool seeing the TVA on the big screen, you know, cause we've always just mm -hmm. seen it, you know, on our TV screens or whatever. So that was really neat. Um, so he walks up and he asked Deadpool, how would you like to be part of uh, a, a, a greater universe? Like, leave the one that he's in like specifically saying come over to the mcu and he shows um we see this screen come up like in the trailer but it's all captain america and deadpool goes yeah. and he salutes <laughs> and yeah and then yeah. there's there's this scene on a screen and deadpool goes well what what is that is that is that me is that is that thor and it's thor leaning over Deadpool and it looks like they reused footage from Thor the Dark World where Loki was dying in Thor the Dark uh -huh. World and you see Deadpool laying on the ground and he's like dying and Thor's leaning over him talking to him and Paradox says oh no that's that's for later on that <laughs> and they cut away from it awesome. awesome it was so cool so I'm I'm guessing that was probably just a gag but maybe it's their plan maybe like in the story that's their plan for Deadpool it, to join the MCU but of course I think that the reason he ends up in the void is because after 
the after joining the Marvel universe, he probably realizes that you know paradox is up to no good, and there's you sure. know his friends are in danger and stuff. But okay, so I'm getting ahead of myself. When he asked, "Do you want to join?" He's like, Deadpool like looks at him, and they look at each other, and he goes, "Would you like to join a timeline that may need?" avenging paradox says that so paradox yeah. is kind of breaking the fourth wall too which is weird and he goes would this be a a, a marvelous event or something he said something that had the word marvel in it and yeah. that's when he's like I, I i smell what you're putting down sensei or whatever and he runs over he goes one second and he runs down the aisle so he grabs the camera and he goes suck it fox i'm going to disneyland <laughs> and he heads <laughs> <puts the lens. laughs> I love it. yeah Oh, that's and, good. Yeah. So that. So he. Uh, yeah. Please. No, no. no so right. okay. So he doesn't want to be Deadpool earlier in the movie because being Deadpool separated him from Vanessa, so he's trying to live a normal life. Why is it different with the TVA having him be Deadpool again? You know, I'm glad you asked that because I I didn't think about how yes at, at the start he's he's done being Deadpool. Um, my guess would be they don't really acknowledge it in what we were shown. My guess would be is that he views this as an opportunity to have a fresh start um, and like feel needed and whatnot. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming that over in his reality, he yeah, with being broken up from Vanessa uh, and whatnot, maybe he just feels not needed and doesn't feel like being a hero anymore. I, I think with the TBA in this story, Paradox specifically, they're probably taking advantage of Deadpool's emotions and how he feels, and you know they're promising him you know, all these great things. And they're probably just using him. That would be my guess I, for what To me, doing. it definitely sounds like this takes place pre-Loki. I, I, it also makes it me does. think like, you know, there were rumors about the ending of Loki being rewritten and stuff that maybe they didn't. This is where the, the paradox uh, of doing like a TV show with movies at the same time can really hurt you because you have to change the show to write out Jonathan Majors. But then this movie comes along where the TVA is still a nefarious entity. Um, if they're yeah. really the TVA, they could be faking it. Probably not, though. I mean, if you want to get into theory, yeah, like maybe Paradox is we'll like get into a rogue. theory tomorrow. <laughs> Let's see. What else happens in the footage? Oh, then we see him suit up. We get the suit up scene <laughs> uh, from the trailer where they do the, the quick cuts of, you know, him getting suited mm -hmm. up. And he's when Deadpool comes out and he does the, uh, when he comes out of the elevator. Um, and he's he says to Paradox, he goes, he, he likes the new suit, but he goes, your tailor is a predator, by the way, because we see the tailor like kind of groping Deadpool a little bit. <laughs> and he says, but that's OK. Love the new suit. Um, and then we hear him say he goes, he's like listing all these cool features he likes about his new suit. And he goes, adamantium katanas. So and, and Wolverine Very metal, cool. of course. Yeah. Yeah, so. yeah. yeah. So then that's setting up. They're going to have a fight at some yes. point. Awesome. Um, so was that so the end of it? Well, that's where that ended. And then they do like this quick little like trailer type thing. Um, okay. it, it was like same footage from the trailer we've seen. And then it cuts to it's Wolverine and Deadpool in a car <laughs> driving down the road. Um, and Wolverine is driving and Deadpool's just irritating the hell out of him. And and, and that's where it ended. Uh, there wasn't cool. like anything said of like significance. But it, yeah, it, it shows it. That final scene gave gave us that little bit of. Wolverine being kind of the straight man, serious, angry guy, and Deadpool just annoying the absolute piss out of him the entire movie. Oh, that's great. God, I can't wait to see that. I'm so glad. I can't believe they showed that much footage. And it sounds I like, know. yeah, it's you gave, you told us what happened, but you can pretty much tell that from the trailer, yeah. you know? So it's really cool to, to get some extra insights into everything. Colton, thank you very much for that exclusive breakdown of the Deadpool and Captain America footage shown at CinemaCon. It means a lot to me. So what do you guys think? Are you super pumped? Is the MCU back? Let us know your thoughts down in the comments below or at me or Colton on X Twitter. And if it's your first time here, please subscribe and smash that bell for alerts. For Screen Crush, I'm Ryan Airy.